G'day everyone and welcome to my art channel Brushes with Beck. Today's video I am using Canson Matons paper. I know once again I am always using this paper but I do love it. Today I am actually using the front honeycomb side of this paper. Canson Matons has two sides. It has the front honeycomb side and the back fine grain side. Now normally if you watch my videos you know I love to use that fine grain side on the back but today we're flipping things around and I am using the front of the paper with that honeycomb texture. I don't know that I've ever actually used it before maybe once early on when I first tried out this paper but ever since then I've been using the fine grain side so I thought this was a good opportunity to work on that. So for today, uh, well today is actually Global Big Day and World Migratory Bird Day and Global Big Day is a big birding event worldwide to help promote bird watching and recording bird species and so for World Migratory Bird Day, in the spirit of that, I of course decided to draw a flightless bird. So I am drawing an emu today uh, with a photo that I took quite a few years ago now and I thought it was just the perfect subject. I was looking through my photos trying to find something and it just stuck out to me. So I am popped in some colour on the neck there as you can see a little bit of blue and the paper texture is showing through there a bit before moving on to the eye. I wanted to lay this in nice and early so I could work out how dark and light I needed to go in other areas and I thought getting that vibrant eye in would really help me work through the rest of the piece and balance it out nicely and it did. So you can see there is paper texture showing through. Now I did find working through this that I could use the paper texture to my advantage and but also work through it and get a smooth result if I needed to. So I actually found this paper you know nice and easy to work on. I didn't have any trouble layering colour down. Um, I mean I didn't expect to have any problems because I really love using this paper just the opposite side of it but I haven't really done a lot of thorough work with the honeycomb side of this paper. I always thought that I would be fighting the texture too much and to an extent there is some work that needs to be done more so than on that fine grain side but it wasn't too disruptive, it wasn't too challenging to eliminate where I wanted to and it didn't cause me too many problems. I was able to use it to my advantage and work around it when needed. So you can see I've laid in a few details. I've put in the, the beak of the bird. I found that actually quite enjoyable. It has a much smoother shiny texture and I feel like I managed to capture that quite nicely and you can see there's not a lot of that honeycomb texture that you can see in some other areas of the piece like where I'm laying down that uh, brown pencil at the moment. But of course that is just one lighter layer of the pencil so it makes the texture more uh, prominent. So just working through this and figuring out how on earth I'm going to approach all these uh, wispy feathers that this emu has. Emus are quite spectacularly dressed if I do say so. They have feathers that aren't, I can't remember the exact terms, but they don't have the little barbs on the feathers I suppose that join all the little fronds of the feathers together so all their feathers are very loose and wispy and of course being a flightless bird they don't need to have their feathers all sleek and neatly uh, joined together to create lift or anything because they're not going anywhere with their tiny little vestigial wings that are left on their bodies. So I found out that the best way to approach this was to lay in a bunch of colour uh, for my base layers and then just lay in a like one or two layers of feather texture over the top and that worked out really really nicely. I wasn't quite sure how it was going to play out um, but I did feel that layering on this uh, honeycomb side was a little bit easier than on the fine grain side of the paper. I felt I had a little bit more flexibility to build up layers and perhaps uh, press a little harder and add more layers of pencil than I might have on the reverse side but that's just 
the impression that I got, I would have to do more experimenting to know for sure, but it felt easier to um, lay down more color without risk of filling up the tooth of the paper and not being able to apply anymore. So that was actually really good. I found I could lay down blocks of my underlayer colors and build that up and just then add that beautiful feather texture over the top of that. Now having done the head and laid in that vivid eye and some dark areas on the head, I decided that my neck was way too light and that's fine, it's better to start lighter than it is to start too dark. So I added some more blues in there and to sort of make that pop a little bit more before moving on to the body of the bird. Now this was the challenging part because I I obviously wanted to include all the detail that's in that in the body feathers there is a lot going on in emu feathers across their body and I wanted to make sure I captured that accurately but I didn't want to make it very detailed I didn't want it to be um, too much of a focus now I would just ask if you are enjoying the video please give it a thumbs up comment down below subscribe to my channel and if you want to help support me further in creating more content please click that super thanks button to donate so I was able to figure out a process for the body of the bird where I was able to do it quite loosely but not too detailed and have it still looking uh, realistic. So I had worked out a process for that where I started out with some bright areas and mapped in some, some of those really bright feathers and then I started mapping in my brown tones around that starting out with my lightest brown and moving towards my darker tones. So it was a bit of a process. I initially wanted to do the base of the neck there until I realized that I had to lay the black of the base of the neck over the top of the browns of the body feathers. So I then had to do the body first before finishing up the neck, unfortunately, which is why I've skipped finishing the neck and moved on to the body. So this was, I mean, it, was a, it wasn't that long of a process, but I did have to pay attention to sort of my light and darker areas to make sure that it made sense uh, on the emu. It's obviously, I didn't follow the reference exactly. I didn't need to follow the reference exactly, but I had to use it as a guide for how to approach those feathers along the back. And that really worked out quite nicely. Now I did just want to mention, I did say it is World Migratory Bird Day, that is Saturday the 14th of May. And now this time last year I also drew a bird for World Migratory Bird Day, but I did draw a migratory bird. So I'm going to link that up in the cards above if you want to go and check that out. I think I also drew that on Cancer Matomp's paper, but that one is a little wading bird and it's very very cute and I recommend you go and check out that video from last year. So now you can see I'm finally filling in that black area that I wanted to do earlier. I managed to get that nice and dark and you can see even with it quite dark with the shine from my uh, lights you can actually see the paper texture still even though that area is uh, fairly solid black. So it's something to keep in mind even when you've uh, laid down all your colour. If you've got a bold area of like a solid colour you may still uh, see the paper texture. Whereas I find on the emu's head with some nice solid layers of colour you don't notice the paper texture because I've got varying colours and pencil strokes there that hide the texture of the paper. So the paper texture, the honeycomb texture is an advantage and a disadvantage. I suppose the disadvantage is if you don't want it there you have to work at it to make it go away. But the advantage is for this piece I was able to use that texture to help create texture on my emu. I didn't worry about getting rid of the texture in the feathers because I felt like, on the body feathers because I felt like it added to the um, texture of the body and also on the neck as well that paper texture actually helps give the, the impression of that sort of the skin with all the the pores and you can see it on the photo, that, on the reference photo there, just the, the detail in the skin there with that paper texture actually is quite perfect for the skin there. So at this point, really sort of starting to refine the body of the emu and make sure I'm getting in as varying uh, brown tones in the areas where I want them and refining my dark areas and just really making sure it all looks 
nice and cohesive. Like I said, I tried to follow the reference photo without following the reference photo, if that makes sense. So there's no, I feel like with a piece like this, there's no pressure to be exact with that, the body of the bird and following the reference photo. It's more about getting that face looking how you want it and the neck as well, because that's sort of at the forefront. And then everything after that can be uh, a bit more loose, doesn't have to follow the reference photo, still has to look like it's, it still has to look believable, but it doesn't have to be um, a photo replica. So that was quite nice being able to be a bit more loose with the body of the bird. Now at this point, finish the body and obviously I just need to finish off this neck. There is quite a lot of detail on the neck. I just want to highlight some of those little wispy feathers there and the tiny little black dots and streaks of the the pores on the skin and the little tiny little feather strands sticking out there. And of course I've got to f finish off a bit of feathering detail along the bottom of the bird's chin as well. So there's just a little bit of fine detail in there that I didn't do when I completed the bird's head and just need a few little feathers under the throat and finishing up with some refining bits here and there just to make sure it's looking exactly how I want it to look. And in all, all in all, it came together really, really nicely. You can see the finished piece here. I thought I'd take a video of it because it's hard to show a drawing on camera because with the light reflection, sometimes you get that shining and it blocks out how black the blacks really are. And so I thought showing that like this would be able to show you guys exactly how that turned out. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to my channel. I upload a new art video every single week. And if you want to support my channel further, please hit that super thanks button down below where you can donate the amount of money if you like to help support my channel and help it grow. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next week for another video. Stay creative.